This is absolutely the most important video that you can watch before the season starts. People pay thousands of dollars to get this information and I'm using the last 25 years of my coaching and snowboarding experience put into one clinic that is guaranteed to change your snowboarding. So make sure you watch the entire video because there's so many secrets and nuggets that are gonna change your snowboarding. So let's dive right into this clinic. Are we recording? The very first thing that we're gonna talk about is how to be in a more optimal body position to land more tricks, to have more fun, and to be safe. Uh, does anybody know when I say reference alignment? Does anybody know what that means? Reference stance, the width between the feet. Ooh, okay, different, but I like your um, thought process. So the first kind of rule that we want to apply is being able to have when we're snowboarding, does anybody know what catching an edge is? Please, oh. Lily, tell me what catching an edge is. When you're on your heel edge going down the mountain and you uh, put your toe edge in, you catch that edge and fall. Absolutely, does everybody agree with that? You're going down the mountain, having the best day of your life, you're on your heel side edge, you're leaning uphill as if this is downhill, and then your weight or your center of mass gets over your toe edge and you go, it is not fun. I've done it. I've done it for videos if you've ever seen it. Uh, I did like a video of like the most common falls and I literally caught an edge all day. It was miserable, but it was fun. And uh, so that is, I like to use the belly button as a good reference for where our center of mass is. So the first thing to know is we want to keep our center of mass over the effective edge or feature. So going into, the, going into the side slip, I just want to make sure my weight's over the edge. If I lean downhill, I catch an edge. But that applies the same as I'm on a feature. So let's say I'm on this rail right here. This is a sick little rail. Some of us want to hit rails. As long as my belly button is directly over the feature, I'm fine. The goal is to have your board flat base, and I'm not slipping out, I'm not falling, but my belly button is over the feature. So what happens when my belly button goes over here? Fall over. Same thing is going to apply this way, I fall over. What happens if I'm in a board slide, but my belly button's over here and my weight's over here? I'm gonna slide right along. Same thing applies on this side. So my goal is actually get my belly button over the feature, whether it's a turn, a 50-50, or a board slide. So now, if I was actually doing a board slide, my belly button needs to go over the feature. Guess what, I'm balanced. Things have become so much more simple if I can just get my belly button over the feature. Now I'm balanced. So that's rule number one. Getting your, um, not your rule number one, the first reference alignment is gonna be belly button over the effective edge or over the feature. That helps us from catching edges. It's the greatest thing in the world. Number two, to help increase our chances of being more awesome is making sure our board our hips and our shoulders are parallel to the terrain. Has anybody ever hit a box and slipped out and fell? Most times it's because you're not parallel. So let's just say that I'm hitting this box. Now all of a sudden, um, the, the feature is like downhill. It's like a little bit of an angle. Well, if I kept my board perfectly flat on a slightly down box, I'm no longer parallel. I'm actually at a different angle. So then I'm gonna directly be on an edge. So technically I'd wanna be parallel, and if the degrees of the box is 10 degrees, then I would wanna actually shift my weight so that my shoulders, hips, and knees match the degree of the 10 degrees. Okay, so what about a jump? What if I'm landing off of a jump? Well, I want my shoulders, hips, and knees to be parallel to the landing, so let's say the landing's 30 degrees. Well, my little snowboard dude wants to be parallel so that I can be able to land with both feet at the same time. What happens if the terrain is 30 degrees down, but my board is perfectly flat? Wash out. Wash out. Technically, I'm in the back seat. Even though I'm flat, I'm not matching terrain, so I now land back seat. Now, either I'm in this really bad position here, hard to land, or I slip out or wash out because I'm so far back, where if it's 30 degrees, I actually want to be able to match that 30 degrees. So that's going to be number two, parallel to the terrain. If we're going, another one is if we're going off the jump, and imagine like this is the angle of our jump, it's kind of an uphill jump, and all my weight's even further back. 
well, as I go off this jump, I'm going to be further back. It's pretty miserable. But what happens if I'm too far forward? Now I'll actually hit the jump and fall too far, too far forward. So again, in this situation, as I hit the jump, I actually want to be parallel to the takeoff. So there are certain times that we want to be in our reference alignment, and there are certain times we don't, which we'll get to in a second. But as we're taking off the jump, we want to be parallel to, to the takeoff. As we land, parallel. To the feature, parallel. Bullet point number two. Going into number three, like Brian said, love this one, is you want to be perpendicular. Your lead shoulder is perpendicular to your lead foot. Imagine you got your steering wheels and your steering wheel is turning right, but your tires are going left. Pretty miserable. I want my steering wheel to go right, my wheels to go right. Let's work together. So essentially in this situation, and I'll, I'll, I'll do it this way, I'm now over the effective edge. I'm parallel to the train, the train's flat. I want my lead shoulder perpendicular to the lead foot. My lead foot's about 15 degrees. Ooh, my shoulder's 15 degrees. I can now go in this direction, but the beauty is I can bend my knees in a very biomechanically strong position. I just squat down. Pretty awesome. The challenge is this lead shoulder opens, this, shoulder, this hip turns, watch my back in. This is a natural position for us snowboarders to be in. This is the, my least favorite snowboarding position. This is not awesome. <laughs> we want to be awesome, this is not awesome. So as we're, and a lot of times when we snowboard, our lead shoulder dictates this position. So we go here, the hip turns, now I'm here. The challenge with this position, my range of motion, meaning how deep I can squat, is now hindered. I can't really go that far. The other challenge is I put my back knee in a vulnerable position to get hurt. This thing is t bad. Uh, I used to do this trick where I'd do like a 720 and I'd land. I'd dislocate my knee because I'd land here. Boom. And I'd tumble down and on like the third or fourth tumble, then it would pop back in. I'd keep going because I'm an idiot. <laughs> so I'm like here, my knee's twisted. It's not awesome. So now I'm in this position where it stemmed from my lead shoulder and hip is being here. Now I'm having a hard time. When it goes into freestyle, throughout the week, you're going to hear a lot about your shoulder will dictate where the lower body goes. For example, if I'm here and I do this, and I simply jump, it's gonna match. So then ideally, if I'm jumping, I'm pointing at this coffee table, jump up, straight down. Easy, do this, a turn. So a simple mechanic for jumping is, point your shoulder where you wanna go. The hardest part as a snowboarder is we wanna, here's another question that Brian cannot answer. Michael, why do we go in this position? Like, why do we do this? Because you can see where you're going easily. Boom. We perceive our world this way. Type at a desk, shake somebody's hand, grab groceries. We do this. We, n we don't walk around like this. <laughs> like, this is not a thing we do. So our body's going into a position that is comfortable for us, which is actually not an awesome snowboard position. So our goal for this week is to be able to understand how to utilize our shoulders to work for us, not against us, as Brian said. So three bullet points. One, being over the effective edge so that we can land and do more awesome things. Two, being parallel to the train so we can land and do more awesome things. And then number three is lead shoulder and hip perpendicular to the lead foot so that we can control what we're doing. So this is called a reference alignment which also means it's just a reference. I don't always have to be in this position. Oh, I'm bored of adding a rail. I want my lead shoulder to be pointed here, and then I do this. Now I'm not in this shoulder position. Now I'm in this twisted position. That's ideal for the outcome that we want, but now when I go back, I still land back into my reference. Sometimes as I take off, I will wind up and throw for a 180. So I'm actually out of reference alignment, and I throw. If I'm doing a backflip, I might be leaning back, or doing an underflip, I might be leaning back. So there's times to break the rules, there's times to be in them. That's the best part about snowboarding, is you can only move in so many ways. We can start identifying these key things, it will change your snowboarding career. Like I said, I used to do a back seven, dislocate my knee. Once I understood how to be in a better stance, stop breaking my knee, stop dislocating my knee. I broke my back because I had bad fundamentals. Stop break, then I fixed my fundamentals, literally reduced my injuries significantly in my falls just because I knew how to be on my board, how to be balanced. So a lot of my coaching and my motivation to run camps and to coach 
is led from me breaking my back. Like, I don't want you guys to go through those experiences, like dealing with fear and overcoming stuff. Like, I've been there. It took me three years to hit a jump bigger than five feet. I'd be seeing a five foot jump and I'd be in tears because I'm so freaked out to hit that jump. But I wanted, but I've overcome that now I'm like feeling pretty good. But I've been through those like really dark times, those harsh times. And it's really led me to create the content and to be able to help you guys become better snowboarders, land more tricks, have more fun, and stay safe on your snowboard comes back from how the heck we stand on our snowboard. So that's why this stuff is so important. That's why we talk about night one before we even get started going into tomorrow. Um, we're gonna be basing this on this. Going into one additional point, when we're jumping or hitting jumps, getting on boxes, a lot of times we can air. One thing that I like to think about is I use a pop when the ground is assisting me. So if I have a jump, a feature, a side hit, those kind of things is where I wanna use a two footed takeoff. So a lot of the stuff that we talk about in the park is gonna be a pop. Now I like that you explained a pop is a two footed extension. So in, on our snowboard, I like, to ex I like to think about my foot is actually staying flat and I'm trying to drive my knees into the ground as hard as possible and I'm not springing off my toes, I'm more just trying to push as hard as I can, but staying flat base. Uh, why do I not want to pop off my toes? Change your angle. Change your angle. And what were you gonna say? Lose your balance. Lose your balance. So naturally as humans, we like to do this. We like to pop off our toes and spring. The challenge when we're snowboarding is there's so much forces pushing up as we hit the jump. And so we end up being in a kind of a weird position. And if we pop, our feet can go back like this. The challenge with our feet going back like this, my shoulders do this. So they can cause a lot of problems as you're going in the air and you start doing this. Straight to your head. I know this because I've done this. It's not fun. It's miserable. So I want to keep my spine more upright. I want to get into a nice squat position. And then I want to be able to push off the ground with two footed. With that said, when should I do an ollie? Yeah, I love that. You might see a rail like this. I'll just, there's no jump. I'll just ollie to the side and hit it because it's fun. But what if there's like a rock? I might have to jump over that rock intentionally or unintentionally, but I would ollie because if I popped, my nose wouldn't get up to clear that feature. So there's absolutely times to do the ollie. There's other times to do the pop. I generally think when I'm in the park, I'll pop or I got a feature, I'll pop. So when we say that, just remember, um, I like to think about popping when I snowboard. I pop every single time I'm in the air. One big reason why is I wanna have control. I wanna drive the bus. I wanna be able to dictate how big I'm going versus, well, let's just see how this goes and all of a sudden the jump puts you in a weird position because you weren't ready because you're not active. So I, I like the question. It's definitely getting a little nerdy, which is awesome. Front side, you'd pop off your heels, traditionally off your heel side edge, therefore heel side. Um, on your toes, you'll pop off your toes, but the biggest emphasis when you're spinning is making sure that you are using your lower body to pop and your upper body to create rotation. I think about it as very different assignments. If I'm gonna do a 900, let's say, can I exaggerate it? I don't wanna be just skidding 90 degrees off and being out of control. I wanna be able to pop and I just use my spine to rotate that throw. So if I was going to backside 360, I would still pop, and yes, I could be on my toes, but I'm not trying to spring off in a way that causes problems somewhere else. I think about, about it more of like, an ex, like a, a two-footed extension, but not a spring off the toes. Okay. You ever do gymnastics? Gymnastics do a lot of like toe stuff, sure. which makes people who do a lot of gymnastics maybe have a harder time doing like heel side, entr or heel side tricks. Um, but just, uh, just more backside 360s, like still driving from the knees. The problem with toes is they're just a very quick but not powerful movement, where a knees will actually get me over here. Like I can jump pretty freaking high if I use my knees, but if I only use my ankles, you can't do much. So we want to use a more gross motor function to pop. And if you want to take your snowboarding to the next level, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we got nothing but nerd and dedicated to making you as awesome as possible. Let's go. What's up guys, Tommy Benny here and today we're going to get nerdy. Awkward. <laughs>
So when I do like YouTube videos, I usually do like 15 intros because I'll do them differently and then I'll stutter and then I'll mess up and then you never, you never know because I just edit them. You wouldn't it. I'm like, hold on, one more, like 20 minutes. I'm like, that one wasn't good. We're going to change this and I'll probably use the first one anyway. So here we are.